Representative Edmonds. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question about the uh, five-year baseline budget. Uh, can someone in the administration possibly an um, entertain a couple of those? Would you Thank you, Mr. Morning. Commissioner. Good morning. Where, where can I find the state general fund revenues for the next fiscal year 1920 in these documents? That's taxes, licenses, and fees. Yeah, it's the taxes, license, and fees line. Look at the very top of the well, page one, the very first thing, taxes, licenses, and fees. Okay, so less the, less the dedications. When REC looks at the, the various sources of revenue, uh, they're, they're discussed as taxes, licenses, and fees, which would include all general fund revenue and those portions of the general fund that have been dedicated by way of statutory dedication. So that first line shows you the gross amount. The second line in red shows you the amount of the dedications backed out, and, and that's what gives you the state general fund number. So the, the state general fund number for FY 1920 is 9605 500,000? Well, for on the five-year baseline projection it is. We do not have yet an REC recommendation for FY 20's general fund number. The last time that REC approved a number was in June of 18, um, which, as we talked about during the presentation of the budget, the law requires you to uh, provide an estimate for the ensuing year and mm -hmm. in June 18 the ensuing year was the 19 fiscal year that we're in right now not the 20 so the only um, the only time that REC has addressed that general fund number is in this five-year baseline projection so you're saying this 9605 500,000 is not the official forecast of the REC it's not the official forecast for FY 20 so in our columns on page one, which would be the five-year baseline to the left, it says total REC revenues, of, uh, it says the terms in parentheses, official forecast. So yeah, why does it say official forecast? Because this is the form that's used to, to provide the five-year baseline projection, and every year until now, we have a, a, an official forecast for the ensuing fiscal year. This is the first time we haven't ever had it. So this particular project these are projections that were were given and approved by rec though back in they in were in june in june based upon in the previous month's numbers right so these well numbers over, this well nine six six oh five five was approved as a projection for REC by REC was that not correct that is correct as a projection based upon the well REC is projection. all projections is it not it, it is all projections, but it is an official forecast when REC declares an official forecast for the next year. And according to the statutory law, REC has failed to do that thus far. That's why we've gone through the exercise of saying you have in front of you a proposed budget until such time as REC meets, hopefully in April, and adopts a forecast for this year and for next year. So you're saying on this five-year projection, any of these numbers that have been adopted by REC as projections are not worthy numbers? I don't, I don't understand. I didn't say that, Representative Edmonds. I answered your question as to whether or not they were projections. And it is correct. They're REC numbers projected for the five out years as the law requires REC to do. And so are you saying that via the Constitution, Article 710 states the most recently adopted estimate of money available for appropriate shall be the official forecast would that not be the official forecast it's not the official forecast because it was not approved by REC for the ensuing year you have to read the constitutional provision with the two constitutional provisions which I went over when I sat here a month ago along with the statutory provision that talks about REC's obligation to revise the forecast for the ensuing year before January 1 of each year that wasn't done either so you're saying that this particular number, a projection that was approved and adopted by REC, was not a number that this administration could use according to Constitution Article 710 or 711 as a number that you could have proposed the executive budget by? We could not use that to propose the executive budget as that term is defined in law. And that's exactly what I told you when I sat here a month ago. That's why it's considered a proposed budget. But you did that because of your interpretation of statute, not of the Constitution. That's incorrect. I did that because of our interpretation of the Constitution and the statute. The Constitution clearly states that we're to have a budget in place 45 days before the, before the session. You had numbers that were approved by REC, not the numbers you were looking for, but you could have gone with 9.6. Uh, 
0550,000. Had we done that, we would be in violation of the statutory provision that requires us to use the ensuing year forecast. And that sure. ensuing year forecast in June of 18 was not for FY20, it was for FY19. So you are saying that in this case, that if we had to look at one or the other, that we would yield to the statute and not to the Constitution. No, I didn't say that either. I just well, that's told what you. you're doing. No, it's not what we're doing. It is what you're doing. It's not what we're doing, Representative Edmonds, and I explained to you, and I'll be, I'll be glad to do that again. I don't have all my notes in front of me today, but I will go get them right now if you want me to come back and go through that explanation once again about the constitutional provisions and the statutory provisions and the fact that and, and by the way, just as a practical matter, had we given you a budget based upon this number, it would have been a totally unrealistic number based upon what we know is the improved situation in the state's economy in which three members of the conference voted for on three different times in order to be in a position to present an executive budget well, to Well, I, I would say regardless of what the numbers are, you're <laughs> bound by the Constitution to present us a budget so we can do our work. And we found... We found we did follow the Constitution as well. And by the way, there is no calculation of self-generated revenue in the forecast. So you would have had a budget that would have reflected no, zero, general, I'm sorry, self-generated numbers in the budget, which is totally unrealistic and would have put you through an unnecessary exercise and required your staff and the Senate staff to be juggling between two different budget numbers, one of which is totally unreasonable and would not have been used because eventually I would suggest to you you're going to have a revenue forecast for FY20 or otherwise you won't have a budget. I think you've set the table every year and had budget that you presented that you didn't like the numbers. I think the governor himself has set the table with numbers he didn't like, but he gave us a tool to be able to go to work on. Also, is there not been times in the past where RAC has revised, the have not revised by January 1st the official forecast yet? Uh, we moved forward? Has that not occurred? You make the exact correct point. We sat here and gave you budgets that we didn't like because we were obligated to follow the official revenue forecast determined by the REC. And we gave you those numbers that we said we don't like and you're not going to like either, but we were bound to do it. This year, we don't have that official forecast to go by. So just as we followed the law in previous years and gave you a budget you didn't like and we didn't like, we gave you a budget this year that we were required to give you based upon the inaction of the REC. Uh, nothing is going to change that and you're now going to have a budget in front of you that you can do with what you want. And if you want to enact a budget with less revenue, you can cut wherever you think it appropriate to cut. Well, once again, I, I just want to be clear that the Constitution requires us to have a budget in place. You had a number to go by. You did not choose that number. You no. should have, it, it, it seems to me very realistic that we, we see these as official forecast numbers in projections just like we do anything else. The REC had enacted upon that. On that data, even the numbers you don't like, and regardless of what would have been cut or changed, you would have had the opportunity to present us with an executive budget so that we could have begun and then even added as we've gone gone along if REC had selected or if they choose in April or May to add others. We've been way on down the road instead of giving false hopes to anyone or either way we particularly want to go. And we are responsible to make certain that, that we hold you guys to the fire on that. We need a budget that we could begin to go to work on. And you've got one. And by the way, Representative We Evans, don't have one. The proposed budget is not a, 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 a binding document by, by law in any fashion. Nothing is binding when we present it to you. you it have, is. The you Constitution the declares that we will have an executive budget, not a proposed budget. Well, well Representative Edmonds, words have meaning. And they when do. you have words in a Constitution, nowhere will you find the words executive budget in the Constitution. You'll find a, the word budget budget in the Constitution. You have in front of you what we believe to be the constitutional obligation to present you with a document that you now get to work with if and when, and presumably when, we have an official forecast for FY20 that will be the determination of how much money you spend. No dollar, as you know, can get spent until this legislature appropriates money. And, and you'll be get engaged in a very practical process now when you get the budget before you and when you get the 
the REC forecast before you to decide how much money you've got and how much you're going to spend. I do not believe that's what you testified to this committee less than a month ago, that this proposed budget has no move for law at all. I believe that you mentioned multiple times at the table just that fact that this is a proposed budget, that you felt like your hands were tied, et cetera. And basically, it, I would say, although I'm not, you did not use these words, I'll use them, it puts us in the predicament of a useless document. Well, we've talked about budgets that we present to you being useless now for four years because every year oh. the original budget document you had uh, either had a billion dollars cut in it that we all knew was not realistic for the people of this state, just like the budget we propose to you now uh, based upon what we believe is going to be a revenue estimating forecast. And by the way, if it's not and if it's a lesser number, then you're going to have a lesser number to work with. You're not going to spend a nickel more than what the REC tells you is, is available for spending. Well, we and certainly my haven't been in the to last you today is exactly consistent with what I've told you when I sat here a month ago. We certainly haven't been in the situation we're in today where we have a document presented that puts us in violation of the Louisiana Constitution. You're in much better position today than you've ever been getting a budget well, walking in the door and it is not in violation of the Louisiana Constitution and no one has seen fit to file suit and contend that it's not in violation of the Constitution either I point out. Well I think the articles are pretty clear and I think we've been very clear to the public today that this is a violation of the Louisiana Constitution, and apparently um, that's the direction we're going to go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's not a violation of the Constitution, and the rest of the members should not view it as such. Uh.